Well, hello, and welcome again to the 2012fad.com. I'm your host for this evening, and my name is Charlie Bluehawk. Last night, we talked about Cosmo Hates Women, and how a major international magazine for and about women, supposedly, actually hates women, and actually tells women that they are fat, ugly, and stupid, and that no man will want them. But if they spend every penny they make on all the products inside of Cosmo, they will make women less fat, less ugly, less stupid, but it's still all men's fault. Cosmopolitan Magazine is such an open and ugly hatred of women that when I was reading this magazine at my, uh, my friend's hair salon, I was so shocked. I got about 75% through the magazine, and then my subconscious, my body, something involuntarily took over and flicked this huge magazine like a deadly missile. It went flying like a frisbee across the room. And just, I, I still to this day, thank God it didn't hit anybody. Because I didn't know I could throw something with just one flick of my wrist that heavy that far. And the magazine is so heavy and so tightly bound, it would have hurt somebody if they had uh, been struck by it. But this, this is only one method that our masters use to control us. They use GQ magazine to convince both men and women that the effeminate man, the young gay boy, is the role model that all men in the United States should attain, that all men, straight men, should be effeminate to be attractive. And it seems to be working because every woman I know who looks at GQ just thinks that the young effeminate boys in this magazine are gorgeous. And those that are married to men hate them because they're not young and effeminate boys. I don't get it. I know that Cosmo sets standards for women that they could not possibly achieve. And, you know, I once figured out that it took me to be a Cosmo girl, you'd act, a woman that would actually have to have a 200-hour week and be working and conscious the whole time. So women, by Cosmo, are set up to fail. And they go crazy. They, I, I, I've seen it over and over and over again. And it's really no wonder that, you know, from my point of view, most women in the United States are just plain insane. And why now men are outright refusing to get married in the States. Because under U.S. law, once you're married and you're a man, you're a slave. She can do anything she wants to you. Anything. A man who marries a woman in the United States becomes even more property than he already is now, than all of us are now. And she can do anything she wants to to the man in, up until the point uh, he dies. And that's the only place he's ever going to know freedom. If a woman actually kills the man she's married to, she might go to jail, but frankly, it's doubtful. That's another, another uh, set of standards kicks in at that point. And that's how U.S. laws are set up. And God forbid, God help you. You should have, one, with this woman, you should have children. She'll get them. And no matter how insane she is, no matter if she has a drug habit, a, a coke habit, a drinking habit, if she beats the children, it doesn't matter. She'll get the children. And you as the man will end up living in your car and paying for everything. You'll never see your children again. And I've seen this over and over and over again. It's, it's like watching the same bad TV show with a different cast. It's the same show. And so tonight I thought we might chat about the will and grace syndromes sort of falling along this line. And I've been seeing this since I was in high school. I'm 52 now, and it's the year 2011. I graduated high school in 1976, and so this is a long time now that I've been seeing this. And I wasn't really conscious of it up until maybe the last 10, 15 years. Again, I, I try so hard to ignore what I see around me because I already know too many weird and hateful and bad things. I try not to notice. But, you know, I wish I had a happy story to tell you. 
And you know what? I don't know one single happy story. I go to bed every night hoping that tomorrow, that tomorrow my life here in this world will finally start. And I'll be able to have happy memories or happy experiences that become memories. I just see all this other stuff and it just can't be ignored because the reality is you and I are nothing but a collection of our experiences. For me, in this particular, the Will and Grace Syndrome, it started in junior college in Southern California, just north of, uh, I'm sorry, just south of Los Angeles. I had a very dear, very close friend of mine, John. Uh, he, he and I had gone to high school together. We had gone into drama class together, and we had ended up at the same junior college together. And he was just a genuinely sweet little man. He was just nice. He was very quiet. I knew he was gay. Never really thought about it because he was just John. He was just a nice little guy. We were great pals. And then one day, this girl that I was madly in love with from high school, she shows up in one of our classes. And why I was in love with this creature, I'll never know. You know, I was 19 or something. That's, that's the only explanation I have. And she, of course, fell madly in love with my friend John, my gay friend John. And being 19, I was just furiously enraged. I was angry. Not at her, of course, because, you know, she was the girl I was in love with for whatever reason. She was, frankly, just a total bitch. But I was 19. What could I do? So who was I angry at? Well, I could only be angry at that point at one person, and that was my very good friend John. Poor little John. Just the nicest little guy in the world. He was absolutely, utterly confused and, and, and didn't know what to make of this woman at all, who was madly in love with him. And like all, pretty much every gay man I've ever met who was caught like this, and I know quite a few, all of a sudden their best girlfriend falls in love with them. And these poor gay guys are just, they just feel completely trapped. They are trapped. She is their best friend. They don't want to hurt their best friend's feeling. So they pretend to fall in love with these girls. So here's a very gay man whose girlfriend has fallen in love with him, his best friend. And now, just so he doesn't hurt her feelings, he has to pretend that he's in love with her. And... <laughs> So let me see, let me recap this. So now you've got a straight woman in love with a very gay man. Now they're a couple. The next thing I find out, they're getting married. And, you know, I'm 19 and I'm not really bright. I'm not really bright now, but I just, you know, I've seen a few things. The girl is in love with the gay boy. And she doesn't see the fact that her boyfriend, her gay boyfriend, she doesn't see that as a problem. And so here's my poor little friend John, just this nice little man, very quiet, very gifted, very talented. All of a sudden, my gay friend John finds himself with a girlfriend. The next thing he finds himself is he's living with her. My friend John, who is gay, is living with this girl. And she's a bitch and she's stupid. I think she was the first girl, and I use the word girl deliberately here because she had the mentality of a three-year-old at best. Another syndrome that I've encountered way too many times in Western women. This girl, who I was madly in love with, she's fallen in love with my good friend, John, who's gay. And she knows that John and I are close, or we were until she broke us up. This stupid woman actually comes to me and asks me for advice on her relationship with her gay boyfriend. Now this girl actually was puzzled and mystified as to why my friend John, the gay boy, was not physically attracted to her. She'd go on to tell me that they were madly in love and they were living together and then she's very puzzled that he doesn't ever seem to be interested in her physically. Now here I am talking to the girl that I'm madly in love with about her sex problems with 
my gay friend, who's now her boyfriend. And I have to admit, I just sat there. I frankly did not know what to say to this incredibly stupid girl. The, that particular problem sadly uh, solved itself. John was hit by a car and killed not that much later. And I, it took me years to get over the guilt of that, my guilt and not at being mad at John for what the stupid girl did to both of us. And I realized one day that John, he understood, because he was that kind of guy. And I know that no matter where he is now, and I hope he's someplace really nice, certainly nicer than this, because he deserves it, I'm really hoping that he forgives me for my stupidity for taking out this woman's stu you know, her selfishness on him. And John, if you're listening, I'm sorry, dude. I hope you're in a really good place. You know, but since that day, I've had this exact same conversation with I don't know how many dozens and dozens of women in Hollywood. Straight women falling in love with their gay boyfriends, trapping their gay boyfriends into living with them, and then trapping their gay boyfriends into marrying them. And the conversation's always the same. She says to me, we're madly in love with each other, but you know he's not interested in me physically. And I have to admit, finally, I just couldn't take it anymore. I would just look at them, these women, and I came up with a standard statement that I had since developed. And I said, it's because he's gay, you stupid bitch. And each and every time I would say this to a woman, and I just frankly stopped caring about being polite, the woman would actually sit across the table from me, and she'd stop, and she'd think about it for a second, and then she'd actually look at me and say, do you really think that's it? And it's at this point, I just can't, I don't know what else to say. I really don't know what to say at that point. And this was my life in the United States, specifically in Hollywood, California. But as I got older and sadder, I noticed the same bizarre syndrome, I suppose it was a syndrome, had spread across the entire country. It was everywhere I went. And it was being specifically, deliberately spread by Cosmo, by GQ, and by television. Television in the United States is our greatest enemy. It is a tool that is used so successfully against us. We are programmed by television, which by the way, if you want to look up television, look up something called the Lily Wave or the Lily Effect. Television flickers at a certain rate. And that rate causes our minds to become very susceptible to suggestion. And then you see shows like Will and Grace, where a straight woman falls in love with her gay boyfriend and makes their both of their lives a living hell. TV has programmed us to believe that right is wrong, that hate is love, and that war is peace. And that by straight women loving gay men, pursuing them and marrying them, is the right thing to do. As we talked about earlier, I've talked to so many married men, uh, married women, who were married to straight, just straight guys. And these married women were so fond of young gay models in men's magazines like GQ that they actually became physically excited by looking at young gay boys. By looking at the feminine men, women, Western women, Western straight women, became physically excited. A couple of times, I actually thought that these married women were going to have an orgasm while standing in front of me talking about the young gay boys they saw in GQ. And yet all these married women had married, as far as I know, straight men. So again, why did grown straight women find young gay boys sexually exciting? Television and magazines. Gets us back to the TV show Will and Grace, a show that I, I hate with a passion. Because it's programming straight women to be disgusted and offended and repulsed by straight men and to turn these straight women to gay boys. 
I don't know if it's being done as a joke. I don't know if it's being done to simply destroy our culture from the inside out, but darn, it's doing a really good job. And we're all suffering for it. I knew, I, 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 there's this one specific woman I knew who guilted her, her gay best friend into marrying her. And she knew he was unhappy, but she just didn't care. Now, she was living with this gay man, her gay boyfriend, and whenever she and I were uh, sitting together alone in the office, she was always hitting on me. But I refused to touch her because as far as I was concerned, she was married to this gay man, and her husband wasn't there, and so without his approval, I wasn't going to touch his woman. Um, so she married this gay man. She guilted him into it. Because in the American culture, this is the in thing to do. A real woman can fix a gay man. Can you imagine? And all of her friends were saying to her, oh, honey, you can change him. You can change him, honey. He just hasn't found the right woman yet. I mean, does this sound familiar to you? A bizarre? I mean, being gay is perfectly normal. Being bisexual is perfectly normal. Being straight is perfectly normal. So why are you trying to change people from what they already are? And so she failed, strangely enough, to fix her gay husband. So according to Cosmo, what does that make her? It makes her a failure as a woman. And that just makes her angry and bitter and mean, because now she's trapped. And her gay husband, well, he didn't want to hurt her feelings, so he stays with his straight wife. And from what I've seen, and I've personally witnessed this uh, a few times, he drinks a lot. This one woman that we're talking about in particular is, was, did a very Hollywood thing. She threw herself a birthday party at a local restaurant. So we were all forced to go as her guests. We had to show up. We had to pay the restaurant for our own meals. We had to pay for the rental of the restaurant. We had to pay for the decorations. And we had to bring gifts. It's very Hollywood. It's very, very uh, American woman. And her gay husband, oh, he was there. He showed up earlier than I did, and I wanted to get there as quick as I could, get out as quick as I could, because I was working with this woman on a business project, and I needed to keep her, uh, keep in good with her. You know, it didn't last, of course. But her gay husband even made it there before I did. And by the time I got there, he'd already had like 38 shots of whiskey. And he was not a big man. He's a little tiny fella, he's smaller than me. And so, here's this poor gay man trapped. He's married to this woman, his best friend, and he's doomed to spend the rest of his life in misery. It's a joke. And it's a joke on all of us. For me, I'm a lesbian magnet. Lesbians just love me to pieces. Thank goodness it's protected me more times than I can tell you from the crazy straight women. And a couple of times, you know, a couple of these nice lesbian girls took me home, and that was just wonderful, and unfortunately it didn't last. It would have been perfect for me. The rest of the time, you know, I'm a lesbian magnet, but uh, sister affection can only go so far, and then you just have to run away. I'm still running. Uh, first I ran east, and I went south, and then I went to New Zealand, and I... <coughs> Excuse me. But Will and Grace, they are alive and well. He's having sex with men all over the place, and she's at home, reading, resting, watching her life pass before her eyes, forgotten. And you know what? There's no waking up, most people. Don't even try. I've wasted 40 years of my life. Please don't waste a moment of yours. For all of us here at the2012fad.com, this is Charlie Blue Hawk. I'm wishing you a really good day please. And reminding you, please, keep that one good thought. The 2012 Fad is brought to you by Coffee and Blood, Love Letters Between the Dead, a series of five erotica horror novels about a fallen angel finding his way back to regain his own soul, and how the CIA war against the human race. Their black magic captures and traps him in the body of a mind-controlled slave designed to hunt down and to kill their god, their Satan.